To develop a business sustainably, an organisation must follow applicable standards and regulations within the framework of its corporate social responsibilities. In this module, we talk about the standards and regulations that apply when running an energy management system. To implement an energy management system, an organisation must treat compliance with legal requirements as a minimum standard. If the laws are insufficient for an effective system, the organisation should supplement the legal rules with internal regulations, and laws, regulations and standards should be viewed positively as a catalyst for continual improvement in energy performance. There should be procedures that regularly check for changes in those regulation standards or laws and then create awareness of change. The acronym ARS and IR is often used for the term applicable regulation standards and internal rules. An ISO 50001 compliant energy management system requires procedures that ensure that the system's rules are correct, understood and properly interpreted in accordance with all regulation standards and laws. That guidelines regarding ARS and IR are clearly defined and the practices are embedded in operations. That the organisation is complying with any changes in regulations or standards and that the organisation is continuously made aware of changes that affect compliance and can identify recommended actions. The first step in ARS and IR is of course to identify the applicable regulation standards internal and, and external rules. Typical legal requirements include national energy conservation legislation or national or local government regulations on greenhouse gas emissions, for instance. Standards will include compliance with ISO 50001, but it could also extend into other areas, such as compliance with ISO 19011, the international standard on the principles of auditing. Internal regulations will vary from procedures to ensure quality to procedures for effective document management and attention must also be paid to references ranging from business continuity procedures to facility health and safety rules. Here's a sample checklist for a compliance procedure. Regularly check legal and regulatory sources for change. Check for changes in the company's standards and regulations with energy implications. Regularly check with networks. Ensure that the entire workforce acts as antenna for legal, regulatory or statutory changes. Ensure that every person has the appropriate information and when a revision occurs, ensure the responsible person updates the relevant documents. Revise and update ARS and IR status reports according to the latest information whenever a change is required. The energy manager must be informed regarding all updated information regarding any upcoming revision. And when a revision is made, ARS and IR must be circulated to energy management systems related personnel, as well as to the energy manager, in accordance with the document control procedures. Review updated contents with the energy management operations team to identify possible requirements for changes in policy, guidelines or procedures. Any ARS and IR status update must be presented at the subsequent management review for further action. As the energy manager, you must be informed of all updates or upcoming revisions and ensuring good information sharing, regular reviews and proper documentation are central themes here. The energy manager may want to delegate some ARS and IR roles if that's the most efficient way forward. Across energy management, the establishment and promotion of good teamwork is central. Various responsibilities could be delegated to a legal, environmental or administrative officer, but it's the energy manager who's ultimately responsible for ensuring compliance with and sharing any changes to ARS and IR. The energy manager should encourage sharing of legal, regulatory or standards changes across the workforce and the energy manager is the lead author of the ARS and IR status report. Finally, the energy manager is responsible for the reports and developments at both the Energy Management Operations Committee and the Management Review